What's good, everybody? This is Coach Phil, and welcome to another episode of Deep in the Game. We are episode six right now, and as y'all can see, I've got a real big player right here, man. We got the one, the only, Kenny Lawler, man. Kenny, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I just appreciate you for having me uh, on, your, on, your, on your episode, man, on your podcast. And, uh, man, being able to be able to dive deep in the game, man, this is what, uh, this is what we do it for, man, off and inside. Shoot, glad you joined, man. We reached out, man, and put it out there, and I said, I'd jump on this opportunity, man. So glad you're here, man. So we're gonna talk about it, man. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it, brother. Best believe. <laughs> so I'm gonna give everybody your numbers real quick for the the numbers junkies out there, man, for this season, man. And you had a little S curl going on in your picture right here, man. What the hell was up with the hair? See, you got the good hair right here, and then the one oh, yeah, in man. CA, they got they get, get a little little. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had, we had to do it right for the picture, man. You know, it's a, it's a vet move, man. You know, this time is coming during, during training camp, so you got to prepare yourself, man. And you got to get on it, man. You got to you got to either get you a little cut right before the day before, and uh, man, put a little else pair in your hair. If you got it. You, got it. you should have it in a locker if you're a vet, man. So I'm gonna just. Man. All around, okay. I I'm mad at right you. Right after practice, man. Right after practice, let's get it done. I'm here. I'm ready. I feel you. I feel you. So Kenny had <laughs> for y'all stat number of people out there, man. Kenny had 50 receptions, uh, 901 yards, six touchdowns, and average 18 yards a catch. You be pissing me off. You you really <laughs> be making me fucking mad, man. Because some of the, I've seen in the reaction. I. But but here's the thing. <clears throat> it's not even like I'm genuinely mad. I, I, you the type of person I speak so highly of you, because no, there's a lot of I had Gino on, and I said Gino made at like might not look like he's the most athletic dude, but he makes plays in game that are out of this world, hurling people, yeah, get crazy dog, catches, man. all that. You, so you, it's not fair because you be making one handed catches like this. You out, and, and I figured you out. You like the sideline catches, or if it's not the red zone, you like the fucking sideline catches. How yeah, do you nah, how you do got, how do you do that, man? <laughs> man, nah, you got some cooking there, man. I definitely love the red zone. Like if you uh for everyone that play Madden out there, it's like, man, when I get in that red zone, it's like my X factor lit up, man, mm -hmm. and it's just something about it. It's just like with red zone trying to make a play, you know. So, uh, but some sideline catches, man. Like I don't know what it is, but like you know the. If you squeeze me to the sideline as a DB playing good technique, you know, the job ain't done. And a lot of DBs might, you know, might uh, think it's over. But, you know, I'm able to just make some nice acrobatic catches and uh, just have the spatial awareness just to be able to land my feet or put my body in a certain way to just uh, to make a play, man. And it's a uh, man. It's just uh, throughout the game, bro, just just catching and just – Going out there and running routes uh, uh, day after day, you know, uh, just, man, put it into work, man. You just, you this gift just comes with you, man. The 10,000 rep rule, you know what I mean? You got to get it in, man. And yes, if you sir. ain't get it in, man, someone else going to get it in. And they're going to come <laughs> try to catch you. And that's what I'm facing right in, in my career. We got some dogs coming. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, just got to keep taking it to the next level. It's it's damn near disrespectful, like how your what your catch radius is, because a lot of it's it's either here or there. It's like a whole clock. It's amazing what you can do, man. And I want to say, man, you some of the plays, I, I just I, I genuinely just get upset. Like th I, there's a lot of people that wish they could do what you could do, but the fact that you do put the work in, you just aren't relying on your talent, man. Highly respect it, man. Highly respect it. Thank so, you. Thank you. What I want to get into, man, is I want you to be able to tell your story, man. We talked about it off camera. Who is that's why the video title was uh for the last video I reaction I did was who the hell is Kenny Lawler? Because <laughs> <laughs> folks really don't yeah, I understand some people probably know about you, but I want more people to understand who you are, man. So tell us your story, man. You from California. What part of California are you from, man? And what was your football upbringing like? Man, so um shit, man, from Pomona, California. Uh, born in Los Angeles, moved out to Pomona, California as a young man, four years old. And uh, yeah, my dad's a football coach, so right off the bat, you know, that's where that's where the um, the football agreement bring uh, comes from. Um, not only that, uncles was uh, gifted athletes as well. And uh, so yeah, from a young age, dad being a football coach, 
um, three, four years old, like I would say three, I'm already out there on the football field watching his JUCO players um, um, practice and everything. I'm just right there. I'm running out there with him barefoot, young little nappy headed little boy, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, man, just seeing that man is just just a passion, just with just a little flame, just as it started, and just over the years, and just over just you know just being close to the game because you know pops uh, was a coach. Um, it was just something I knew uh, at a very young age. At a very young age, this is what I want to do at the end of, uh, for my for my career. So yeah, man, went and uh, from there, um, went and played a, a high school ball at Upland. Um, yeah, Upland was um, I was an all state receiver. Um, all the kids out there for you all know, want to go to the opening was when it was the first class of the opening, man. And um, yeah, I had a great career at uh, uh, Upland, and uh, was able to have more than uh, I want to say twenty five offers going into my senior year, and um, Picked Cal to go to. Picked Cal. One, it was a, a number one public institution in the world. I don't know if it still is. Probably is. But um, but they have a, they had a great uh, a great lineage of not only uh, receivers but just a great program. And uh, I wanted to continue that man, so I went there. I redshirted, which I think was the best overall best thing for me as a, a youngin. And uh, man, um, yeah, redshirted. Uh, my my freshman year was uh, the backup and just worked my way to just becoming a starter mid year. Uh, made some uh, well, then some unbelievable catches. Uh, you guys will be able to see them, and just and just from there, just kept stacking and stacking, and uh, made my name as uh, one of the uh, top receivers in the draft. And uh, going into the draft, I was uh, selected as a uh, in the seventh round to the Seattle Seahawks. Um, didn't really take that draft serious that draft uh period seriously and uh my stock had fell and um man ended up going to seattle seventh round did two years there uh practice squad but um man being able to be there um and um took the opportunity for granted but i still i still was able to learn some amazing things from some amazing people reason one of the reasons why i wear 89 is because of doug baldwin man uh, mm. Doug baldwin a dog, man, and I just his mentality, his passion for the game, um, his just his just his just overall make at the receiver from being just like a five ten guy, uh, five eleven. Um, if he sees this, I hopefully is is, is correct. But um, <laughs> one of the most one of the most sudden um, sudden guys, just the quickest guys off the line, in and out of his break. He's he you're you're, you're not. You're not you're not getting out of it as fast as him, and it's just like you know to be able to learn from guys like him, Tyler Lockett, Jermaine Curse, Paul uh, Paul Richardson. Um, um, was it was a great opportunity because um, man, when I came up in uh, to um, to um, CFL, they gave me 89 here in Winnipeg. Um, I was rocking with it, man. I'm like, I ain't gonna change this number. I had the opportunity to be a single digit and all that, but I'm like, nah, man. I'm a this is kind of like paying homage back to where you know I learned a lot of the game from because I relied on the on a a lot of my a lot of uh, my uh, gifts just on the physical physical side of it, um, uh, you know, um, and during college and then um, to be able to learn and just dive deeper into the game of uh, football, I was able to be um, just an even better receiver that I that I was and uh, man came in here. My 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 career didn't start here in uh, Winnipeg. I actually started in uh B C for two weeks, man. And um wow. I tore my hamstring. I tore my hamstring. <clears throat> and it was a great it was a great two point five. And uh man it was like man, I'm this flat tire. I'm done. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I had to sit out for about uh, two and a half months, and uh, BC was calling. I was like, you want to come back? I was like, uh, yeah, you know, I got this other opportunity to go to Winnipeg, something called the player expansion. I think I'm just going to go over there. So, you know, I went over there, and um, from the day I got there, you know, made a uh, made a great impression on the field of, the, you know, what Kenny Lawler could bring to the uh, team. And uh, that was 2018. I obviously didn't play that year. But uh, going into it, going into the um, 
going into the 2019 uh, year, they gave me the opportunity to start. And um, I, I ended up starting that year. And um, that year was uh, the rookie of the year for the team. Uh, we went on to win the Grey Cup. Mm -hmm. It was a great year. And 2020, we had the Kobe year, so we didn't play. 2021, come back. And, uh, man, lead the league in receiving, go on into win uh, another Grey Cup, man, which was another just outstanding year, man, to do it back-to-back -back, uh, in this amazing city of Winnipeg, man. We, uh, it was it it was it was dope. So and, you know, from there, I was able to able to go and um, I received a workout for the Falcons. That didn't uh, you know go as planned because of some off the field things that uh, I ran into in twenty one. Um, but then um, I ended up coming back and um, going to Edmonton, man, and just breaking the bank, man, breaking the bank. Yeah, um, creating, you did. creating. <laughs> Creating what the uh, what we see now with the receiver market is, man, and I can, uh, you know, honestly say, man, trailblazer and doing that, and uh, man, doing that was a uh, great, you know. Didn't have the year we uh, I, I tend to intend to have over there at Edmonton. When you play the game, you always got to play the game uh, for one goal, and that's to be, you know, the champions. That's to be number one, man. Yep. And uh, you know, we didn't we we fell a little short of that. But then, um, man, able to come back and do it here, you know, Winnipeg, come back and um, fall short of it, you know. But again, you know, what an amazing season, bro. So, um, yeah, man, in about like, you know, seven to ten minutes right there. That's that's my journey in the league. That's, that's and, it. Um, and then, yeah, that's it, man. So, uh, thank you for sharing that, man. I didn't know you had a chance. Uh, two weeks, a little cup of coffee in B.C., but I really, it's really nice to hear you talk about um, your little stop in Seattle. Because when I went, when we first met at uh, the Gravy Bowl in BC, I saw you. We chopped it up. And to be honest with you, from I don't ever judge people before I meet them. But when I saw you and we we locked up, locked in, whatever, I swear to God, I thought she was crazy. I, I did. I thought you would. It's the, it's the like crazy, no crazy. I'm crazy. So I'm thinking, all right, we go vibe. <laughs> no, facts, facts, man. Facts, man. You ain't got a little crazy. You ain't got a little weird in you, man. I, I can't trust you, man. Nope. You know, I, I got to be able to know. I already know. If, if, I, if I call you, I'm like, if I'm some shit, I already know. He going to pull up. Some shit going to go down. But we going to make it through. <laughs> no, nah, definitely, man. No, nah, for real. We going to get out the jam. Yeah. Psh. Mm. anyway uh no but i'm saying man like when you talk about doug doug's one of my favorites man doug doug does a lot of stuff around uh my hometown and uh dude is an incredible human being you guys have that same intensity that same we by any means necessary we're gonna make this catch we're gonna be precise we're gonna get out of our breaks yeah. one of my favorite yeah. doug uh sound bites he did was i think it was against arizona and uh, it, it kind of it's simple. When you mentioned him, it symbolizes some shit I think you would say on the sideline because you're not really disrespectful. You're just very direct. Yeah. He said to uh, Pete, he says, I know what you're trying to do right here, but I need the fucking ball. <laughs> and, and showed up. It was that it was the big play he had go up the side. I was like, and when I heard, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I that's, that's, that. that's Doug. But then I, when I met you, and I'm kind of we be talking that's angry, more, that's like, angry that's Doug, that. man. And, right. <laughs> he that's always angry does, man. nah man it's uh i want to say he's, he's mad bro but he's fiery bro because mm -hmm. he knows he knows that um what he does he does it at a high level oh yeah and one you better put some damn respect on my name yeah. and two i'm in the league so you better put some money in my pockets too so um you know um, just it's just having that chip on your shoulder, man. Having that extra grit that someone, you know, having that extra edge, man. That's that's what he has, bro. And that's what makes him great. And you know, people could you know judge him a certain type of way, but um, bro, that's that's just the mindset, man. In that meeting room, we'll talk about man, dogs, bro. The dog, the dog mentality, um, the mindset, you know, uh, and that what, what you have to be and what you have to carry to. Uh, to uh to be a dog man and uh even though i didn't truly embrace it fully when i was there man it stuck with me mm -hmm. and um that's what that's what i mowed my game after 
like being that dog, you know what I mean? And in every aspect of the game. And, um, and, uh, man, bro, that's, you can tell, man, uh, I mess with the, <laughs> I tell know. you what, man, I tell you what, I got man. his back. Man. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, uh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I will say this though. You mentioned, uh, talking about your story, man. Uh, when you went to Edmonton, uh, to be, we all about transparency here on the channel, man. So I'm just going to keep it a beam with you as the only way I can. No, nah, facts. Do you feel like when you went to Edmonton, you coming off of 2021, you mentioned you had, we ain't going to go into all the information about that. It's everybody know, um, the legal issues and stuff that you had. Do you feel like it was a lesson you learned that you had to go through that shit to, yeah, you got sure. your payday, the big payday. Do you feel like, you you learned your lesson, but at the same time you're like, damn, I had to go through that shit. I had to get through that. I had to get out that, that <laughs> situation. What was going on? And then you get to Winnipeg and motherfuckers were everybody, I'm gonna be real with you. Everybody was talking shit. Everybody I, I saw people saying shit about you, like, oh, he's got a certain yeah, nah, It was crazy, man. It was like, crazy. Yeah, um, you ain't gotta go all the detail about it, manage your business, yeah, but I'm nah, saying, like, what what is you, did you I guess what I'm trying to say is what was that experience like for you and the Kenny Lawler we see now, it just it don't seem like the same person. But yeah. what'd you learn? If you could pass nah, it on bro, to anybody yeah. that gets in that situation, what would you say to them? Man, and then, you know, that's uh that's exactly, man. Um one, it, it just it just adds to the story. Um mm -hmm. and then two, it just it just now gets me um just a platform to be able to speak to the yeah. kids, speak to just adults that are dealing with the same thing man and um um during that time bro it was a um, it was a time like you said i needed to go through in my life to really unlock you know my full t my full potential as a human being um to be able to not take things lightly not take things for granted because just in a blink of an eye just by a wrong decision um what I love could be taken away from me. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the grace of God, man, I was able to make it out of that situation and um, still be able to, to reap the, reap the fruits of uh, uh, his labor and uh, my labor and uh, man, make it, make it out of it. Not a lot of people do. And uh, now to just be able to speak to, to kids, I, uh, I did a, did, I spoke with the rifles. That's um, CJFL. Mm -hmm. uh, the junior league I spoke yeah. to them a little brief about briefly about it wasn't brief but <laughs> <laughs> um but um yeah I spoke with them about the um the situation and um just just what it means that you know situations don't define a human being you know it's what you do after the fact that you know that defines your character and you know the the things that you want to be in life man and the things that i want to be in life is a motivator uh inspirer um just be a person that wants to give back and even though you know i still have those things on my heart at that point in time um you know i was i was blinded by the fame if you if you don't recall that uh two nights before that yeah. um just went up my first 200 guard game in the cfl man and you know i didn't get no sleep didn't get no rest and what is one of the biggest things is being a professional athlete recovery i uh, neglected that um because i wanted to go out and feel like being in the limelight being in the scene was reaping the benefits no nah, man it's reaping the benefits is getting back up and doing it again you know what i mean and again and again and again until you get to that cup and you get that hardware that's that's really reaping the benefits, not these couple times that you're going to go out with your boys and, you know, have some stories to tell and everything. Well, I have a well, I have a dope story to tell and it's not anything that I want people to relive, man. And um, to be able to help people not get to that point and to make the right decisions and to lean on your teammates or lean on your friends in in these times, man, that's that's, you know, where I'm at in my life. And um you know, I'm not running from it. I'm not hiding from it. Um, you know, if anything, you know, I'm standing on it, embracing it, because I know there's going to be many people that are going to be facing that decision and 
to hear my story and uh, what I have to say about it and uh, the things that I've jeopardized, not only just football, but my family and and everything and what it could have, you know, come to. And just if I was to hurt someone in the, in that in that um, instance, it, it, it would have been bad, man. And, right. um, you know, um, like I said, I thank God for getting me out of that situation because uh, it could have been a lot worse. And, um, man, just being able to be here and to speak about it. And I hope, hopefully someone does hear this and it touches them. And um, and um, when they are faced with that decision, you know, they think about it. So, um, man. And that, this is why we vibe, man, because we, we, <laughs> we think the same. It's, cre it's crazy because you – you touched on it and you mentioned like you had a big 200 yard game and then it happens we're, we're all human mistakes happen and the fact that you you stand on it and you say hey i did that shit is what it is and it's part of the story it don't really matter my uncle always told me he said it don't really matter about who the messenger is did you get the message and that's Man. what i that's what i see when it comes to you is you do have a hell of a story you have a story that a lot of young cats need to hear because the way and the way your your career ascend has ascended so far. Because I forget we the same damn age that <laughs> you carry. We carry ourselves <laughs> a little older, so <laughs> threw me off. But um, it, it's it's crazy how your story is. Like I look at I look at the numbers. I'm listening to you, and it's like, damn. Okay, 2019 came in, won a great cup. Then 2021 broke out, crazy year, and then. Most guys, it takes like, what, three, four years for them to get their payday. You got it in year three, and mm -hmm. you were asked to be the guy at, what was it, 27, 28 years old? Yeah, man, asked to be the guy. And uh, I'm not going to lie, man, that's what exactly going into um, going into 2021 mm -hmm. I wanted to be, man, because um, – um, I was negotiating with BC. Um, I forgot who the other team. It was a minute ago, but there was another team on in there with an offer. And uh, this time around, just coming off of COVID, I'm going for the most money I could get. You know, yeah. maybe it was a blessing we had COVID because I could renegotiate this rookie <laughs> contract that I was on. Because we ain't gonna talk about them numbers, right? Well, so um, you know, I was just like, you know, I'm willing to bet it on myself. Then you know, Winnipeg came in and gave me a nice contract then. But um, man, bro, um, that's what it's about, bro. It's about um, I kind of like circled away from the uh, the the um, the um, the um, the the uh, the, uh, the question. But man, no, you good, man. You know, Talk, man. This this um, that's what it, that's what that's what it's about, man. Is uh, about betting on yourself and uh, coming in knowing that you could do it all, man. Do it all because um, that's what I that's what I wanted in two thousand twenty one, and I proved it. And uh, going into 2022 with the Elks, I'm like, you know what? I can do it all, man. Not just to stand on the receiver guy. Put me in the waggle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get it there, too. You know what <laughs> I mean? And, um, you know, not only that, put me on the blocking. Put me mm -hmm. on the short yardage, man. I'm the number, I'm the, I'm the most highest paid non-quarterback asking to do more than just catch the ball. You know right. what I mean? But that's what, I, that's, that's, you know, what I was asking for, man. And, uh, I ended up uh, taking a little, a couple injuries from it. I ended up high ankle sprain and short yardage, and um, I ended up um, uh, breaking my collarbone, season and an injury. But um, yeah. man, bro, about betting on yourself and uh, knowing that you could, uh, you know, offer it all, yeah. especially if you know you're that guy, man. You know you're that dog. I can tell, man. I mean. Now a lot of guys want to shy away from that when they they want the money but they don't want to do the work to get it when they get after they get the money. So to hear you say that, hey, I, I'm asking for more, that says a lot to you as a character, as your, your character and who you are as a person. So I I highly respect that, and I know everybody else will respect that. You know, so Man, then you no. go, you go into 2023, mm -hmm. come back to Winnipeg, you do your little time, do what you had to do, and then you come out, boom. Like nothing had like nothing. It was nothing <laughs> to you. Six touchdowns, nine hundred one yards, uh, fifty receptions. Man, you just you. Well, your, num man. your numbers, man. Nothing really changes with your numbers. They just grow. They either grow or they just you gonna get yours. So what? Take me through the season, man. What was going through your mind? And we'll also talk about uh, 
little projects you have off the field after we talk about this season in the Great Cup? Nah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, what was going through my mind, man? It started uh, it started uh, coming off uh, that season ending injury, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, shit, man, broke my uh, collarbone. I think during that time, I was about second in the league. Mm-hmm. I was chasing Sean. And um, man, man, broke it. And um, so then, um, you know, to come back, it was like, you know, I never really had a uh, had a um, season-ending injury before like that. Like, I never had surgery like that, you know. So I'm just, like, in my head going into the offseason because that's, that's where the season starts in the offseason. You know yeah, what sure. I mean? You ain't, you ain't, you ain't finna, you ain't finna, uh, you ain't finna get these thousand-yard seasons. You ain't finna get these six, ten touchdowns if you ain't getting it in in the offseason, you feel me? So, like, you know, I approached that offseason, like, you know, I got to get back in the bag, man, because I'm already starting from where I have never even really started before. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I've, I I got a season-ending injury. My body is, like, weak as hell. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, I got I got to, got, got to get it in. Yes, and uh, that's what I did, man. I was preparing myself to have a breakout year, bro. I was telling my guys I was working out with, man, all the cuzzos, man, shout out, Gavin Cobb. Danny Vanderport, man, um, man, all my guys over there, man, at uh, TTC and Peak Football. Yes, sir. But, um, man, yeah, we was we was getting it in, man. I was telling them, I'm I'm gonna have a two K, two K this year, mm. two thousand two thousand yards. That was my goal. You know, I don't, I'm not really a guy that like has personal goals. You know. Just because that takes away from, you know, that sometimes, you know, you can lose sight in the overall individual, in the, in the overall goal. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're here to do. You know what I mean? But, like, I'm like, nah, bro, I'm that, I'm that dude, bro. I'm that dude. And um, I'm going for 2K this year. So, like, man, popping out, man, getting it in, didn't miss a camp, didn't miss a camp a uh, day. You ever been to camp, training camp in the CFL? I will be there this summer to see one, see a couple. Oh yeah, yeah, nah. You're gonna see what it is, man. I tell you, it ain't no joke, bro. It ain't it ain't no joke. Oh bro. no. Oh no, I've, I've I've heard some stories. <laughs> Hammies is going and everything. We got two a days, man, like mm. in high school. And this is two a days. Not only that, you were a receiver too, so we gotta run, right? I didn't I didn't miss a day, didn't miss a rep unless the coach told me to got get out and I was probably trying to fight the coach. You know what I mean? So, like, and then, bam, all of a sudden, I got to sit out. Got to sit out six games? Mm. Well, it's like, what was the point of me going to training camp? If I I understand, Gordon, you got to go to training camp, get your legs loose. You've done all this work in the offseason just to sit out six? Damn. Right, and I didn't know it was going to be six. And a quarter of the season, hopefully, you know, we were thinking it was going to be more three to four, you know, and it ended yeah. up going to six and everything. But, you know, it happened. Uh, the reason why we were in this situation is because of the situation that happened prior to that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you got to, I got to own up to it. You know, I got to, I got to, I got to, you know, take it on, take it on the, uh, I ain't going to say that. Whoa. Um, <laughs> mm. But, um, yeah, you know, you just got to, you just got, yeah. you just got to own it. You got to accept it. Yeah. So um, luckily, I had the best lawyer in the in the in the uh, country, uh, Sophia, and uh, man, uh, I can't. I always butcher her last name, but uh, yeah, Sophia. Big she shout know. out, my immigration uh, lawyer. Um, but um, yeah, I ended up getting it done, and uh, and came back hot, man, angry, like you know they gonna feel me, bro. And my my my, my mind, the whole my. Whole, my mindset the whole um, season was just in savage mode, you know, savage time, you know, demon time. Man, it's mm. time to go. Mm. I'm already back six games. You got to catch up. You know, I got to catch up. You know, I'm thinking that. I'm not trying to, like, boast that because I know at the end of the day, my guys been handling business. You know, I'm on the, I'm on the oh. best team. I stand on that. Yeah, we lost the great cup, but, you know, I'm on the best team, you know. Um Y'all, not just, y'all you know, is nasty. on the field, mm-hmm. not just on the field, but within that locker room, we got the best guys. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, if you know, it's one of the things, if you know, you know, man, FIFO, you know, mm. 
Um, so like, it's just, it's just one, it's just one of them things that like, my guys was handling business. I'm not trying to walk around like, you know, I need, I need the ball. I need to catch up. You know, I need my ops, man. But it's something that I'm, I'm like, yeah, you know, sitting back in my head, it's, 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 it's a chip on my shoulder, you know, it's talking to me like, yeah, man, what you going to do? What you going to do with this rock, man? Right. So, um, man, popped out, Edmonton. He could have swore it was like, it was planned, right? You know, it was, though, you know, God was behind it. God was behind it. Uh, God was but, there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, popped out Edmonton, man, about like seven targets, six catches, I think, uh, 97 yards like that. I always, like, I always shot, like, if you look at all my my, my stats, there's like 99-yard games, 98-yard games, 93 like I always fire short of that hundred yard, you know what I mean? But no, then, no, you know, actually, this is the this is the crazy part. I got the stats right here. Popped out. Seven receptions, 93 yards, didn't score, but the next game was absolutely fucking disrespectful. You had seven receptions for 200 yards off of seven receptions, eight attempts, one touchdown. Your longest was 64. And it just you you did hit that little stride where it's like, hey, right. hey, 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 and and they call it was against BC, yeah, and they call a, a PI that on um, offensive PI that was no that wasn't even an offensive PI. Like, no, that's bullshit. No, that's bullshit, right. Kenny. Because no, you did the same shit against us at the Banjo Bowl. You did see, you think you slick, nigga. You think you slick, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> now your numbers are just boom, 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 boom. They're what they they're. <laughs> You have one game each season where you just burst on the scene, man. And having the the unit that you have, I, I tell people all the time, BC, Riders, and y'all are the most complete, have the most complete receiving core, but also the most complete teams. The only two yeah. teams, it's you and BC when it comes to offense and just firepower, yeah. where BC is more, boom, we're going to be quick. We're going we're gonna to play tempo. We got... I didn't realize most of their damn receivers are over six fucking four. Man, yeah, man. Receivers. I didn't. Hey, no, nah, I didn't. Um, man. Um, Hollins, Hollins. Yeah, I didn't I know he was that tall because he's fast. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, he got them burners on him. But I was like, and he got some height, man. Okay, man, that's what's up, man. Yeah, no, nah, he, he got some dogs over there. Some guys that could go, man. But then and, it's y'all. Uh, hey, y'all is us. not fair. And it's us. You know, us is crazy, man. Us, we got guys that do it all. Yeah, we might not have, have that um, that burner, you know what I mean? The dude that's going to take you up the top. Yeah. But, uh, lucky whitehead type speed, you yeah. know what I mean? But um, we got we, we got we got dogs, bro. Obviously, we got Sean. He's led the league in two years he, in, in a row. Um, shit. We got Rasheed Bailey, uh, hands down. He is the, the, the most savage of them all when it mm -hmm. comes to just – Providing lanes for Brady to run, bro. He's a big part of our run game, bro. And not yeah. only that, all and the opportunity presents itself. He's gonna come down with it, man. Proving. Um, who else we got over there? Dansky. Wallet Tarski. Uh, don't even talk about it. Wallet Tarski, man. We always knew Wallet Tarski was a dog, man. He's a crafty, savvy vet. He popped out on the scene this year, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, just happy for that guy, man, because um, he's a dude that works his his tail off. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna cuss. I know we been, but um, you know he 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 works, bro. He works not just you know not just him, but all the guys work, bro. All our five, bro. Um, um, feel like I'm missing one, Nick. Nick, nah, yeah, I, I was about to touch on Nick Dog. You know what I mean? Um, a thousand yard guy, thousand yard guy, Canadian bull. He mm -hmm. runs the ball as well, bro. Pass protects, bro. Just breaks tackles, yak, and like dog, bro. We we got dogs over here, bro. So, but you say, but you say also like you just mentioned before. You guys don't really have like, and shout out to Lucky man. Lucky Lucky's that dude, man. But you guys, you say you guys don't really have uh. A guy to take the top off, I would consider you. It's either you or Dalton that's that dude that can take the top off, but you do it, you both do it in different ways. Whereas Dalton will kill you up the scene. You are, I'm gonna take the top off boundary wise. And, 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 and you know, um, 
when we say take the top off, we ain't take. I, 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 I'm a, I'm for sure deep threat. Don't sleep now. No, no, but, no. Um, you are, you are, give that gift but, to um, um, but um, you know, I'm talking about like that four three. Like, oh you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, but you kind of like, have it with Jay Dog. Though, hey, don't sleep, man. We gonna get Jay Dog in that offense, man. And he oh gonna, yeah. He gonna, but yeah, no, but um, but yeah, man. But the shit, man. That was the mindset, bro. Savage mode all year, bro. Um, every time the ball's in the air, got to make a play, got to come down with it. That's what I tell the guys I work with, man. Because um, at the receiver, bro, we don't control when we get the opportunities, right? You know, mm -hmm. we got to rely on the whole line. We got to rely on the uh, on the um, the quarterback to get us the ball. Um, if the read was there, that'd be the biggest one of the biggest things. We got our play. But the re it wasn't the re, right? So like you're not gonna get all these opportunities, but it's about what you do with the opportunity, right? It's about at the ball it's at the beginning, the release. Uh, you now let's even take it back. We play Canadian ball, it's about the waggle, your release, your stand, the top of the route, the 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 catch, mm -hmm. the yak. It's about all of that, man. And we could train all of that, man. And you uh you said, man, get into a little bit of what you got to offer. Man, we got something big coming out. There's gonna be a lot of a lot more um information coming out um coming soon, especially going into the new year. But yeah, man, we're gonna we got the uh, we got the the baller, um the Kenny Lawler um balling with the stars um um experience, man, for the for the kids, man. And um uh, it's gonna it's gonna entail a lot of things within this experience. We we get away from the camp camp uh title just because it's all experience that we're going to be providing these kids from the from the mental from the physical work that they're going to get um to the the, the on the field so when it comes to speed agility um and when it comes to the people all uh that wants to come collectively to be able to come and uh pull this work off you're not going to get any better high level training man and uh, to come and compete get training compete and then to hear from the guys uh what we uh what um our journeys were like and just different things you know um to be able to offer the kids that they might be able to utilize within you know the community and um how to navigate their uh their journeys man it's uh it's all about giving back man it's all about giving back that's what i'm for so yeah man come the new year man uh everyone be on the lookout we got uh we got Kenny Lawler presenting the balling with the stars uh experience, man. And it's gonna mm. be it's gonna be dope, man. It's coming it's gonna be coming. I'll let you know the date. Yes, it's gonna sir. come in March. I'll be there. I'll let you know in March. So um, pull up. So yeah, man. It's gonna be in Montreal too. So, you know, it's gonna be a vibe, man. It's gonna be a vibe. So yeah, man. Everyone be on the lookout, man. For real. Hey, we're gonna put it out there, man. That's why I had y'all, man. So I'm, thank you so much for coming on, brother, man. I really appreciate you. You know where you stand with me. And uh, best of luck to everything. I'm hopefully see you in March for everything you got going. And uh, if there's anything else you want to say to anybody, man, the floor is yours. Hey, man. Shit. <clears throat> if you ain't working, someone working harder than you, man. So, uh, Facts. yeah, no matter where you at in life, man, what field you in, because, you know, football run deeper than just uh, – than just um than just football, man. So it's, it's a life thing, man. The things that we learn from this game. So uh, to be able to apply that, just work, yo, work your ass off, man. And um, yeah, if you ain't working, someone working harder than you. So uh, go, go get that bag, man. It ain't just gonna get handed to you. Don't look for no handouts. Go mm -hmm. get it. Keep, hey, for real, Kenny. Keep writing your story, man. Keep man, writing, that, keep writing you, that shit, keep man. Appreciate you, Coach Phil. Hey, Phil Trill. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, that's a t-shirt idea. I'm gonna I'm 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 put that on a t-shirt for the winter drop. But uh hey, hey, keep, keep, keep writing your story, brother. I really appreciate you and uh hey, man. you dog, man. You my dog, man. It's all love, hey, brother. Man. Hey, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for having me again, bro. This was uh this was a pleasure. Thank you, man. Hey, this is another episode of Deep in the Game. We might be deep in this game, but you got the rules missing. Y'all take care, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>